Hello everybody, and welcome to my first impressions video for Dawn of Defiance. I do want to say thank you to the developers for sending me an early access key so I can show you guys what is up with this game. I have about 13 hours played so far, and I just wanted to share my experience with the game and overall first impressions with you guys. Dawn of Defiance is set in mythological ancient Greece, and that setting in particular is really what kind of triggered my interest in the game. You know, the, the Mediterranean style open world with the cypress trees, the crystal clear blue water, and like the white seaside cliffs. You know, they really did take the premise and make a beautiful open world for you to explore. Definitely one of my favorite parts of the game overall is just its presentation and art style. You can tell they put a lot of attention to detail into that presentation and not just the graphics and art style but also the animations and the sound design as well. A really big plus for me is the sounds in this game are really nice and also it probably has one of my favorite wood chopping sounds out of any crafting game I've played recently. And you will be doing a lot of wood cutting in this game so that is a definite bonus for me in particular. So as far as progression goes, so the game starts you off on this little starting island. You're cut off from the rest of the open world at the very beginning. And in order to progress, you'll need to focus on completing the main quest line because progression in this game is a little bit different from other crafting games. To start out, you need to unlock new crafting recipes by actually discovering them inside of chests and from completing your starter quests. You can't just run around and gather new materials to instantly unlock new recipes like in some other crafting games. You actually need to focus on exploration and focus on completing your quest objectives in order to progress your tech and your character overall. The starter quests are pretty simple. They'll have you go through the normal hoops like making your starting tools, building your first thatch hut, and just overall thoroughly exploring the entire little starting island until you know it like the back of your hand basically. And once you've done all of that, you've completed your quests and really thoroughly explored it, you'll be given your last couple of quests on the island and those will unlock your superpowers basically. There are three main abilities that your character gets in this game. One of them is the ability to fly around. The other is to do sort of an air dash that lets you quickly traverse little short distances in a burst of speed. And the last one makes you invulnerable to all fall damage and also gives you like a ground slam attack if you attack while you're up in the air. So three really interesting powers that kind of change the dynamic of the game. And I think the flying is a really, really cool addition to crafting games. In a lot of these games, in creative modes, they'll give you the ability to fly and it really makes building things super easy. But in this game, the flying mechanic is just built straight into the core game. So when you're building structures, you can kind of fly around them, get a bird's eye view of how it looks. And it also just makes exploration in general really interesting and fun in my opinion so definitely a huge fan of the flying power in particular and I think a lot more games should use something like that it really makes building and crafting uh, really interesting and fun to do. So once you've completed all of the progression in the beginning island you'll open a portal into the crossroads area as they call it and this whole area will be the new open world for you to explore and to go questing in there still is uh, one chunk of the map that's still locked. It is an early access game, but the rest of the map is open and ready for you to explore. And as soon as you walk through the portal, you'll be greeted by an NPC there. And this NPC will be your main way of progressing your game and your character from now on. He has a bunch of quests that you can accept, and these quests give you a lot of money for completing them. And basically now, in order to get new recipes and new technology, you have to purchase these recipes from this NPC. So 
you need to complete the quests, do a bunch of exploration to find chests with money in them, and once you have enough money, you'll be able to buy the new recipe from this character that will give you the next crafting bench or the next ingot recipe in your progression tree. So again, I think it's a, a really interesting system. It's very much unlike other crafting games in my experience. You really do need to focus on completing the main story and completing these side quests and side objectives in order to actually get money to buy the new recipes that you need. And the side quests are all pretty simple. Uh, it, it ranges from just gathering certain materials and donating them to this NPC, uh, hunting specific animals that he needs, mining specific ores, so it's basically tasking you with exploring and finding all of the materials that you would normally find if you were just going out and exploring the world otherwise, so I think it, it really ties in well with the open world aspect of it. it. It gives you an objective and something to focus on while you're out there instead of just sort of aimlessly wandering around the world, so that is an interesting system. I kind of liked it as I was playing through it. You know, some people might prefer to just be able to instantly craft iron ingots as soon as they find iron ore, but in this game, you need to buy the recipe for the smelter that does the iron ores from this NPC, and so on. So that is how you progress in this game, and that is the way that they decided to handle progression overall. So once you've unlocked some new technology and the ability to forge tools and armor, um, it requires a specific bench in order for you to be able to craft metal armor and metal tools. Once you've done that, the actual crafting system in this game is pretty streamlined. To start off, you basically have just one basic recipe for every tool and weapon and armor type, and you just select the type of material you want to build it out of. So you can build the copper helmet or you can build the iron helmet. It's the same helmet, but it's just a different material with better stats. From what I've seen, you can also unlock new item crafting recipes from completing the shrine quests. So the main quest in this game is to destroy all of the shrines to the Greek pantheon, and I have completed two of those shrines, and in doing so, I've unlocked the trident for Poseidon, so I can craft that, and then also a couple of items called the hoplite spear and the hoplite shield. It seems to be just a visual difference for the shield and the spear. Um, the stats seem to be exactly the same as the other one that you can normally craft, but it is like a different visual appearance. The Poseidon Spear, however, is a very unique and powerful item. I, I haven't been able to craft it yet, but it seems like it'll be really cool. It does frost damage, so as you complete the shrines to these gods, you should be able to get new items to craft. But overall, the crafting system is pretty streamlined. There's just one main crafting bench that you use to craft everything from the basic copper tools all the way up to the ambrosia quality tools, which are the by far the most powerful and extremely expensive, and I'm nowhere near to unlocking them yet. But even if there are kind of a limited number of recipes in this stage of the game, I do think they all look really cool. I really like the style of the armor. You're kind of like a Spartan warrior looking guy with your shield and your spear and your plumed helmet. So I'm definitely a fan of the look of the items. I do think maybe there could be more, and I do know that they're planning on adding more craftable items in the future. But that is the basic crafting system. I, in my gameplay, I've played about 13 hours, as I said. I've progressed up to the iron stage, and as soon as I reached iron, um, you know, I crafted up a couple of basic things out of iron, my tools, so I can gather materials a lot more quickly, and I pretty much just stopped progressing the game and really focused on building my base at this point because once you get the hammer you can actually start to build stone building materials and the stone building materials in this game look super super awesome in my opinion i love the greek architecture style to them and i guess i'll just go into the building system in general as i mentioned before with the ability to fly around your base it makes crafting a large scale base just really streamlined and simple i really really love the ability to fly as you're crafting it feels like you're in a creative mode but it is just the core basic building mechanic of this game it you really take it for granted as you're playing through this game because it, it makes it so much more simple and the, the style of the building pieces i think look really really nice i think it'll be probably impossible to build a bad looking building out of the stone building pieces because they just the basic walls and the basic columns and all of that look so good. I'm a huge fan of the design of the building pieces and they are planning on adding a lot more building pieces to the game as well so that's something that's just going to get even more improved in the future. 
So once you've crafted up, you know, your forge set of weapons and armor, uh, it's time for some combat, right? So the combat in this game is pretty simple at this point. I do really like the animations, as I mentioned, you know, the lunging attack that you do with the spear or the sword as you're sprinting towards an enemy is super cool looking. I always take the opportunity to start an engagement with a nice lunging attack to the face. And the combat itself, um, there is like a parry system so you can perfect parry enemies' attacks with your shield and then get them with a counter attack. And you have to be mindful of your stamina, there is a dodge roll mechanic as well, so it's, it's pretty much standard third person action combat. Um, it is fun, and you know, one of the things that I think this game could use is some more like combat-focused superpowers. Pretty much the only power that you have right now that's combat-related is you can do that plunging attack when you're flying. But I didn't find too many opportunities to actually use that in an actual battle, so I think maybe more powers from different shrines or something like that could definitely improve the combat experience. But overall, it is fun. It's nice third-person action combat with a stamina bar and a dodge roll system, so similar to like, you know, a Dark Souls style or pretty much any third-person RPG that you might play. I did enjoy the combat and, you know, there is quite a bit of it when you're going to the Shrines of the Gods. There will always be soldiers and usually like a Gorgon hanging out there, so you're gonna have to do a lot of fighting. As far as enemy variety goes, uh, there are pretty much just the basic soldier type enemies. There is an elite soldier with a giant hammer that you can fight a couple of times. There are some Gorgon enemies, so basically Medusa, she shoots you with like a confuse ray that, that gives you a debuff, and that's a pretty tough enemy to deal with. And there's also like a giant golem that you can fight that if it's a certain type of ore golem, so a copper golem for example, will drop copper ores when you defeat it. And there are also these little sort of goblin, they call them the lost enemies that spawn at night and also spawn in caves when you find them. These guys are basically just small little goblins that uh, you know can wield a shield and a sword and shoot you with arrows. So. All of the enemies, you know, th there aren't too many at this stage in the game, but they are planning on fleshing those out as well. That is it for enemy variety pretty much at this point, and from what I've seen at least. So there is a lot that I like about this game. As I've mentioned, you know, I love the art style and just the progression system in general I think is really interesting. Um, I do think there are a couple of things that they can do to improve the experience, uh, mainly I do think that we could use a different form of traversal, so I don't know if mounts or something like that is in the cards, or perhaps better potions. There is a potion that gives you like a sprint speed bonus that makes uh, running around the map a little bit quicker, uh, but I did find myself a lot of the time running through the map and kind of just constantly having to stop to wait for my stamina bar to refill. So different traversal options I think could go a long way. The gliding and that air dash ability, they take up so much stamina that it's its a little bit more economical to just normally sprint on the ground. You can level up your skills in this game as well. So, you know, from foraging to mining to wood chopping, every single skill has a progression system attached to it. You can level those skills up and you can also level up your superpowers. So I do know that, you know, the dash and the glide ability do level up and I'm assuming that gives you better control over your stamina. So maybe if you had a character with maxed out glide and air dash, that could be a little bit better of a traversal option. But early on in the game, you're going to be basically just consuming your stamina regeneration potion all the time and just running across the map. So different traversal option, I think, is definitely something that they should look into or just improving that a little bit. It can be a little slow at times just running through the map. But overall, I would say that this is a really, really fun survival crafting game. I really enjoyed my time with it, and I'm planning on putting more time into it for sure. I spent a lot of time crafting my base. I'll show you guys what my base is looking like here. I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's a, a really cool looking base, and I, I definitely know that the building pieces, the stone walls, are contributing a lot to that. You know, it's not my sense of aesthetics, it's just that the, the building pieces, the basic version of them, look so good that I think it'll be pretty difficult to build a building out of these stone pieces that doesn't look good. So, you know, that's a huge plus in my book. I absolutely love the aesthetic of the game, the art style. 
I did find myself pretty addicted to, you know, grinding the materials to get better armor and, you know, trying to progress my character to be even more powerful. So this definitely is a really fun game and I would 100% recommend you check it out if you like survival crafting games and especially if you think the setting is interesting. I really, really love the setting of this game. It's super unique to the genre and I think that they have a, a pretty clear vision of where they want to take the game. You know, it's still in early access and there's a lot coming in the future. So I'm, I'm super excited to see how the game evolves in the future. And I'm definitely going to be playing it as soon as they unlock the new region of the map. And uh, I want to play through all of the content that's available in the game currently. They say that there's probably about 25 hours of content available in the early access version. And if you take your time like I have been, you know, building up your base, yeah, I've played about 13 hours and I've only completed two of the eight available shrines to the gods. So I'm thinking maybe I can get 30 or so hours out of it. But, uh, you know, your mileage may vary depending on how quickly you push through the quest objectives and focus on progressing that way. But overall, I would definitely recommend the game. I think it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of stuff to do in it, even in its early access stage. So thank you again to the developers for sending me a code. And thank you everybody so much for watching this video. As soon as I stop the recording here and finish up my video, I'm going to dive back into the land of the crossroads and get to work getting my trident ready to go because I want to see how the frost damage looks on that thing. Thank you everybody so much for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Goodbye.